Good morning, gentlemen. We have an audition with Mr. John Pilkington. We're the six chitterbug boys. Oh, yes. Room 23, third floor. Mr. Pilkington's on his way now. Yeah. That's ten bands Mr. Pilkington's got to show this morning. Yes, isn't it a pity he hates music? <laughs> and take this note to the outside broadcast department. During the Derby commentary on National, I noticed that the word can't was used on three occasions. Kindly note that the word is cannot. <laughs> I can't think where these fellows are educated. Any more mail? Yes, Mr. Pilkington. He has a prepaid telegram from that Mr. Jack Hilton. Oh, what do you want this time? He still wants an audition, sir. But damn it, man, we've already told him he's got to wait his turn. There are 500 bands want auditions. Why should he have his before the others? Yes, sir. He says, as you can't give us an audition tomorrow, would you drop in and hear us at my Jack in the Box Roadhouse, which you pass on your way home? Infernal impudence. What shall I say in reply, sir? We're allowed nine words. I'll use only one. No. There you are, Mr. Pilkenden. What about giving me an audition with the microphone? How dare you let these people pester me like this? What? What the deuce is this? They appear to be combinations, sir. Well, where do they come from? Good heavens! Rushing on the BBC. Who's responsible for this sacrilege? I've got no idea, sir. Well, find out. Go up there and report to me. Yes, sir. Find out who's using the top floor and come to meet me in my office. Hola. You should shut up when you're told. Come on, Biz, wake up. Mrs. Bagwash will be here soon to do for us. Come on. Oh, half a minute. Let me finish my dream. Get up, you lazy little man. It's time to do our daily dozen. You do 24. I'm a bit tired. Yeah. Oh, stinky, you are unkind interrupting my lovely nightmare. Never mind your nightmare. Now, oh, do listen. It's ever so interesting. Well, what is it? Well, I dreamed I went to Wembley, and there were no dogs, and there wasn't any hair. No hair? No. And instead of the hair, they had my sweetheart, Norcia. Oh, she looked ever so pretty. And she was being chased by a lion. Well, go on. What happened? Well, that's just it. You woke me up, and now I shall never know whether the lion escaped or whether Norcia ate him. Ate the lion? Well, you know what an appetite she's got. Ooh, lummy. It's gone half past ten, and we missed the changing of the guard again. Oh, and I did so want to see the soldiers. Well, I don't know about you, but I want some breakfast. I wonder if Henrietta's laid us an egg this morning. Oh, it does seem a shame robbing Henrietta of her poor little egg. It's no robbery. She's finished with it. I say, Stinker. Oh, no. Who used this razor last? I did last night. Well, you've done a fine thing. You've left it in reverse and it's pushing your whiskers back in my face. Don't be a silly little man. Come up on the roof and have your morning run. You know what Miss Stack said? Here, you'll have to wait till I change. How about I'll run round the roof? Oh, let me do it by myself. See how long I take. All right. On your mark. Set. Go. <laughs> Who is this Waterson, anyway? Hello, Lewis. Here. Yeah. I'll tell you what I want. Well, Lewis, aren't you looking homesick? <laughs> what have we got for breakfast? Morning, cock. Now then, Henrietta, what have you got for us this morning? Oh, look, big. Look what Henrietta's laid for your breakfast. What, all that for me? You naughty girl, you've been slacking again. Gerald, your missus is suffering from night starvation. Never mind, Beat. We'll put them together and scramble them. No, no. Fair's fair. Big-hearted Arthur, that's me. We'll boil them as usual. Now, put them in the tin while I get the sundial to time them with. All right. <laughs> Ready? No, no. Just a minute. Wait till the shadow gets on the line. Oh, blow. Now the sun's gone in. Never mind. We'll have to sing the chestnut tree. That's right. Four verses for hard and three for soft. Are you ready? Yes. Then go, please. Oh, underneath the standing chestnut tree, 
Big and stinker must agree. Look at me with your cock and boot story like that. It's unthinkable. Now tell me, where did you say this letter is? In uh, this room, sir, R27. R27, is that a studio? No, sir, it's a rehearsal room, sir. Not often in use, sir. Do you know anything about this? No, sir, we, we, we don't use that. It's used for outside broadcast. Oh, no, pardon me. We have never been on that floor. It's used by in town tonight. It certainly is not. It's... I don't care whose office it is. I... What? Who's had the audacity to put this thing on my fire? The roof! La 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 Oh, look, Stinker, my little egg's got a puncture. Is it cracked? Not half, it's in the tubes coming out. Oh. What's the meaning of this? Oh, isn't this nice? Mr. Perkins in himself, and just in time for breakfast. Oh, and you've brought my comms back. I thank you. What are you doing on this roof? Yes, that's right, Stinker. What are we doing on this gentleman's roof? Well, at the moment, sir, we're preparing breakfast. Are you responsible for that? Oh, no, sir, that's not us. No, you've got the wrong one this time, sir. That's Mrs. Bagwash. Mrs. Bagwash, who's she? The, the woman, woman who comes in to help us with the spring cleaning. Granted. Who are these people? Well, I haven't a card, but I'm big-hearted Arthur, and this is Stinker Murdoch. Yes. Uh, we came here for an audition, and they sent us up here and told us to stand by. Yes, and we've been standing by now for three months. Do you mean to say you've been living on this roof for three months? Well, we wanted to be on the spot, sir, <laughs> and what a spot we're on. This is the flat, sir. You'll have to excuse the room, Mr. Perkinson. We haven't made the bed or emptied the old anything. Heavens, a bedroom! No, a bed sits, sir. What's that? Oh, th th that that's a drawing, isn't it? Good. It's me, my gad. No, by stinker. He's ever so clever with his pencil. Oh! Going to more sorts. Take all this rubbish and clear out. Clear out? You mean leave our flat? At once. But we've only just bought a new bed tick. Get out! But what about our audition? If you're not done in half an hour, I'll send for the police. Who is me prescatorial? Territorial. Albert Memorial. <whistles> isn't he a, a bully? bully? Come on, pig. We know when we're not wanted. We'd better start getting our smalls down. In future, this roof will be out of bounds to everybody. Well, this is the last straw. Look at my trousers. Look! Jesse's chest. I beg your pardon, oh, you silly little man. I mean the chest Aunt Jesse gave us to keep things in. Oh, that one. Oh, that's in here. You in our way? You're in mine, rather. I, I want to get up and let live. Michael Standing. Dicky Murdoch. Haven't seen you since Cambridge. Oh, you're not the standing who's always standing on the corner of the street, are you? Yes, I am. Introduce me, Dicky. I was at Cambridge, too. Really? That's very interesting. I'm the Trinity. Where were you? I was at Playerforce. What are you talking about, Big? I was. I got my B.S.C. A Bachelor of Science? No. Biter of Sausage Covers. <laughs> I'd like to hear about that. What's your name? Uh, Arthur Askey. My new chum. Arthur Askey? What are you doing here? Broadcast? No, outcast. <laughs> outcast? Well, so long as you're not downcast. <laughs> <laughs> but tell me, what do you do for a living? Oh, chiefly auditions. We've been trying to get one here. So that's your ambition, is it? No, my ambition is to be a radio star and have a lovely house out in the country and always turn up half an hour late for rehearsals. <laughs> me too. Sounds very nice to me. A little place where you can take the air. Mr. Pilkington's given us that already. <laughs> oh, dear, I am sorry. But uh, tell me, Miss Tresky, are you married? No, I always look like this. You've got a girlfriend, I dare say. Oh, yes. Her name's Norcia. Oh, I understand. Does she want to settle down in the country, too? Oh, she doesn't mind where she settles, as long as she can go to the pictures. Well, you will have to get a place in the country where there's a picture house. Eventually, we hope to open a show of our own somewhere. Well, that sounds a good idea. Why don't you come with us? Wherever we go, there's sure to be some corners you can stand oh, on. thanks very much, but I'm under contract here. Oh, bad luck. Why don't you try and get with a decent firm? Oh, Mike, while you're here, I suppose you wouldn't like to help us out with this lot. I'd love to, boys, but uh, I'm on the air in a few minutes. Carry on, London. Fire oh, Wait a minute, here's Mr. Middleton. Ask him, he might help you. Oh, Tar. 
Do you? Uh, not me. Steady. Whoa. <laughs> Hello. Good, Good afternoon. afternoon. Well, what's the trouble here? Doing a bit of transplanting or something? Oh, Mr. Muddleton, we are in the middle. We've got to get all this stuff in our little car out there. What ought we to do? Well, I can't see that you've anything to worry about. I should start by getting a pruning knife and... and trim all the edges off the whatnot. After all, it's a rank growth, something like my old Aspidextra conodliensis. And cut out this dead wood. It might make it a bit lower, but perhaps some people like it better that way. No, I'll tell you on second thoughts what I should do. I should wait till the autumn and collect a nice lot of dead leaves and garden rubbish and make a good bonfire of the lot. Goodbye. Hi, Angle. <laughs> Don't be difficult, Dickie. It's simple enough. You sit on Aunt Jessie's drawers and stick your feet through the legs of the washstand. You left this junk in the foyer. Now move along, please. Pass along, please. She'll never take it. Ignore it. Pretend it is now. Move along, please. It's quite all right, officer. We're just loading up the car. Yes, there's been a slight technical hitch. Well, hurry up. You're causing an obstruction. Here's a car waiting to pull in. Well, there's plenty of room for him to back in front of us. Yes, live and let live, Inspector. Never mind about that. Get it away. All right. Back in front of this car. Make room, please. Back in here. Hey, mind the paint! She won't start. What she? No. No wonder, no petrol. Well, where's the spare tin? Oh, it's under the luggage at the back. Well, we can't unpack now. We'll have to push it or get a tow or something. Oh, aren't you a fuss, Pop? What is all this? Why isn't my car opposite the door? We've got a slight obstruction, sir. Oh. So it's you again. Take this confounded contraption away. You take your confounded contraption away and we'll take ours. We're not your servants now, you know. Now, we're members of your public, so you better behave yourself, otherwise we'll stop paying you our ten bob a year. Oh, yes. I don't think you're everybody because you've got a big car. We've got a nice car of our own. We want to buy yours. We could do it. Well, we're not going to bother because we haven't got the money where Well, then I want to see your license and insurance. I thank you all. isn't it? Can't we sue him for that? Well, here's a nice mess. All our stuff in the ditch. Never mind. We'll be able to find the petrol tin now. Here it is. Yeah. Ooh, and what do you think? What? It's empty. Jay! What's up, Penny? He's coming. Who? Piggington. I saw his car coming over the hill. You'll be here in a minute. Pat! Pat! Hey, hey, wasn't it a fire? Oh, Pilkington's coming. Tell the boys to stand by. We'll see if he stops or not. What's the matter? What's happened? The back tire's gone, sir. Confounded. How long's that going to hold us up? Well, at least ten minutes, sir. Well, well, don't tell me you've had a puncture. You have had a puncture. What's it got to do with you? Oh, nothing. But I was just wondering if you'd care to come inside and have a cup of tea whilst it's being fixed. Huh? Oh, thanks. Better than sitting here. Let me know when it's finished. Just better, sir. And I think those punctures aren't the same. Hmm? Exactly. That's what I always say.
for you. If so, let's go. Here's a little swing for you. If I can, that's what I said, said me. I went up to a pirate chief and politely raised my lid. She did. And got myself apprentice to the famous Captain Kidd. Yo ho, yo ho, some kid was Captain Kidd. On a good ship called Sea Jane. We put the sea from Dover, then the rum went round again. And we were half seas over. It's hard to be a pirate and sail the rolling bay. And have to scrub our necks on the good ship for CJ. Tell me, uh, did you like it, sir? Like what? The number we just played. Oh, yes, you've been playing, haven't you? Quite good. Well, the wheel is on, sir. There was a nail in the tire. A nail? Oh, that's funny. I only put down broken bottles. What? That's just what I was going to tell you, sir. The road's covered with glass. Glass? Oh, you uh, put you put down broken bottles. Let me explain. There it is, sir, all over the road. So you deliberately put glass on the road so that I should get a puncture. But we only wanted you to hear the band, sir. We didn't mean any harm, Mr. Piggington. Jack in the box. Then you must be Jack Hilton. That's right. I might have known it. Oh. Don't think you can get away with this outrage. I'll have you prosecuted. 
The lot of you. I can't push another step. Well, you don't have to. Here's a petrol pump. Oh, yes. Down the hooter. Very? Very? Let's have seven. Good evening. We want some petrol. How much, sir? All about a pint. I'm sorry, sir. Can't let you have a pint. All right. Half a pint will do. Don't take any notice, my friend. Put a gallon in, will you? Oh, Dickie. Oh, isn't it lovely? A pig start. Do you like the country, sir? Oh, yes, I think it must be the yeoman in me. Yeoman? Yes, my father was a yeoman. He used to go to bed with his spurs on. Mother used to get so cut up about it. <laughs> <laughs> that would be one and five, sir. He's got no sense of humor. Yeah. Here you are, my good man. Oh, I suppose there aren't any cottages to let round here. Cottages? Yes, you know, with old oak beams you can bump your head on and everything you want. Outside. Oh, Mr. Hobday's the man you want to see, sir. In the estate agent's next door. He's got cottages in all kinds of places. Hey, come on, Dickie. Let's step in and buy one. What, now? Yes, I feel a deal coming on. We've got all our furniture and things. We can move in at once and save ourselves a night's lodging. Are you Mr. Hobday? Yes. Yeah. Well, we'd like to be fitted for the house. A house? Yes. Oh, my dear sir, I've been in a house. I've been moving to the seating. I'm now house now. Where, where, what kind of a house would you like? Oh, the usual sort of house. Four walls and a grievance. Yeah, I, I, I think I have the very thing for you. The Laurels. Gentleman's country cottage. Two receptions, four bathrooms, 16 bedrooms, and an Italian lodger. Oh, we couldn't live with him in the house. Who? The Italian lodger. Lodgia. So how would you ask him for this, uh, this tiny cottage? Oh, my dear sir, it's a bargain. Only 12 guineas. What, a year? <laughs> A week. Oh, have you anything cheaper? Without beams. How much do you want to pay? We don't want to pay anything, but we've got three pounds. Three pounds? Just wait a minute. Aye, aye, aye. Here, this ain't right, four and sixpence. Yes, it is. Oh, no, it ain't. Then I took this here job on as caretaker. You promised me five shillings a week. <laughs> I've told you every week you borrowed ten shillings from us last derby day and were stopping sixpence a week from your salary until it's paid. Mm. That's different, isn't it? Yeah. Well, how much do I owe now, then? Six shillings. Mm. Yeah. Ooh, I tell you what, you give me two weeks' pay in advance and I'll settle the whole thing up instead of fiddling about like this. Eh? Where's the Droom Castle file? She is, sir. Uh, why? I think I can let it. Let Drew Castle? You can't rat. That place is haunted. Uh, people never stay there. It's full of ghosts. Who are you? I'm the caretaker there. Well, the ghosts don't seem to have done you much harm. Ah, and they go there in the daytime. I wouldn't sleep there at night. Do you know, sir? I've seen some horrible things. People without heads. People with swords stuck through them. And the smell of sulfur. Oh, oh. Dad, nonsense. You've had your money. No go. Yes, all right. Yeah, but I've warned you. If you let people move in there, then ghosts are going to cause trouble. Mm. Uh, it's a lot of trouble, too. Yeah. Oh. Oh. oh, that's old world, all right. Um, now, here we are, sir. I think this is exactly what you want. Oak beams and everything. Uh, well, of course, it's a little larger than what you required, uh, but we'll take that into consideration in the rent. Oh, isn't he a nice man, Vicky? What sort of a place is it? Well, as a matter of fact, the owner's in America and just wants to have people in, you know, to keep the place aired. So, shall we just say a nominal sum? You give me your three pounds and you can stay there till Michaelmas. Quick, quick, give him the money before he changes his mind. Does this mean we can move in at once? Certainly. Three. I'll give you written authority. Mr. Askey, Arthur Askey. Received from Mr. Arthur Askey sum of three pounds for rent to September 25th for Droon Castle. Castle? That's what it's called. Thank you. Here's the key. Uh, of course, you know it's quite an old place. Um, some of the boards may creak a bit at night or one or two little things like that. But remember, 
That's a perfectly natural explanation for everything. Yeah, I see what you mean. Oh, Dickie, I'm so excited. We've got a castle. Come on, let's go and run a flag up to show that we're in residence. Oh, I'm the king of the castle. Sit down, your church is ours. Oh, I'm the king of the castle. And deserves the ball. Think this is the place, Dickie? Yes, isn't it? All right, why? Looks as if the moths have been at it, doesn't it? Well, what do you expect the three quid from the sign? Oh, well, I've heard about strange happenings in castles like this. Oh, don't be so childish. Get the key and let's go inside. Come on, Lily. Oh, well, what was that? Only a bat? Well, who threw it? Lily, all sorts of strange things happen in the country. Remember what the gentleman says is a perfectly natural explanation for everything. Here's the key. Open the door. No, you open it. It's your castle. Well, you better do it. I can't reach the keyhole. Don't worry. I'll hold you up. Oh, will you? Oh. Well, if anything goes wrong, you let me down, won't you? I don't want to be left up there hanging on to the key. Open it. Don't worry. Remember, there's a perfectly natural explanation for everything. Whoa, oh, what's the matter? It's cozy in here. Don't say you unless you've got something to say you about. Oh! Uh, now who's who is? It's all right. Just gave me a shot. Only a suit of armor covered over with dust What did you shut that door for? I didn't shut it. Well, we'll have it open anyway. We must have some air. What were you running for? I thought you were in a hurry. Yeah. Oh, look, Dickie, there's an organ. Yes, well, leave it alone. Oh, let me play a bit of organ. Go on, you pump it up now. Yes, go on, pump it up. Yeah. I'll play something. Right. I know. I'll sing you my signature. I am ready? Yes. Then go, please. Big hearted Arthur, they call me. Big hearted Arthur, that's me. That's me? What was that? Must have been an echo. Oh, yeah. I'll start again. Big hearted Arthur, they call me. Big hearted Arthur, that's me. That's me? Right. Clean if I'm not very clever. Clever? But only because I've got to be. I've got tall ambitions for such a short man. The echo was there when this chorus began. But can you hear it now? I'm blown if I can. Big hearted Arthur, they call me. Big hearted Arthur, that's me. Some people in our position are feel scared. Yeah, I suppose they would. Look, Big, it's a bedroom. There it is. Ah, some candles. Oh, light them. It'll be a bit more cheerful, won't it? I'll explore. <laughs> Cobwebs. Why oh, say, Dicky? What's this? That? That's where we're going to sleep. Well, I'm not going in the top bunk. Oh, don't be silly. We're both sleeping here. What, you and I in the one bed? Of course. Well, this is my side. Oh, lovely spring. Aren't you going to undress? No, 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 no fear. The, the sheets may be damp. Dickie. What is it? Oh, that, that man's hand under my pillow. Are you sure? <laughs> I'm positive. It's your hand. Oh, so it is. 
Oh, knock it, Dickie. Don't blow the lights out yet. I didn't do it. You didn't? Give me the matches, Dickie. Oh, I don't like this place. I'm frightened. Nothing to be frightened of. Remember, there's a perfectly natural explanation for everything. Yes, perhaps the main fuse, then. Candles don't have fuses. Well, the main wick, then. Couldn't you go on horn somewhere else? We want to get to sleep. Wait a minute. Was it you playing tricks with those lights and doors? Yea, verily, it was even I. There you are, Big. I told you there was a perfectly natural explanation for everything. But he says he's a spirit. Spirit, don't be ridiculous. There's no such thing. No such thing? What then am I? I'll tell you what you are. You're a blinking old nuisance. Here, you can't talk like that to me. I can... I tell you, I'm a ghost. Then tuck your head underneath your arm and push off. Whose ghost are you, anyway? I'm the ghost of Jasper Blackfang, the miser of Doom. Oh, Dickie's the miser. Oh, I've always wanted to meet one of those. For 500 years, I've haunted this spot. Oh, aren't his eyes awful? Oh. Begone! Well, uh... Begone from this place, ere I blast you to eternity! I'll wreck you with pain. I'll turn your blood to ice. I'll grind your bones to powder. Be gone! Yeah. Be gone! Oh, oh, Be gone! Dickie. We'd have stayed there another five minutes. I wouldn't have half had the wind up. Yes, we're well out of it. So, as a matter of fact... Don't tell me. There's a perfectly natural explanation for everything. Where are we going to now? I don't know, but we can always ask when we get there. Hey, Jack. There's a car coming down the road. They might be customers. Right. Quick, boys. Up on the stand. Charles, fix the stable. Thank heavens, Dickie. Here's some light. Yeah. Seems a bit posh. I hope they don't throw you out. I'd even enjoy that after what we've been through. Good evening, gentlemen. Can I get you a table? No, show us where it is. We'll go through it. Up this way, please. You'll get a good view of the cabaret from here, sir. Oh, goody, goody. Now, sir, dinner is ten and six. Uh, uh, would you like it a la carte? A la carte. A la carte. That's an idea. A la carte, of course. Uh, on the back, sir. Uh, here it is, sir. Oh, I see. Now, Truick, Fumé, 4 and 6, Jambon, Fumé, 6 and 6, Saumon, Fumé, 8 and 6. That's rather expensive. What is it? That's French for smoked salmon, sir. Oh, I suppose you haven't any bloater, Fumé. Oh, certainly, sir. All wrong. Fumé, 4 and 6 the pair. Oh, you shouldn't eat as many as all that. This is more like a big vegetable soup, sixpence. Yes, how much is the bread? That bread is free, sir. We'll have two plates of soup and a fortly loaf. I beg your pardon, sir. You heard the order, my man. Two plates of soup and a step in it. Uh, step on it. Uh, get the soup. Beat, beat, beat. Oh, very well, sir. And no onions in his, he's coughing. Shut up, Big, and listen to the band.
Oh, you go, this creature. Come oh, to my arms. Oh, I've been gone. Oh, I, 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 what do you think you're doing? Jackinson. Arthur Askey. Go on, play some more. We haven't had nearly enough yet. No, and you, you wouldn't have had that if I'd known who we were playing to. All right, boys. I'm awfully sorry this little man gets so carried away. Oh, you don't have to apologize. This is Jack Hilton. We're old pals. We were pierrots together at Walton on the Natty. Oh, oh, happy, happy days. days. What are you doing here? Well, we were passing and... Oh, this is my playmate, Stinker. How do you do? Stinker? Why do they call you that, or shouldn't I ask? Oh, yes, do rather. Ask me anything you like. It's a rather long story. You see, my uncle... Oh, don't start him on that. Well, I'll tell you some other time. My real name's Dickie Murdoch. Oh, and to complete the ceremony, I'm Pat Kirsten. And I'm Freddie. How do you do? Lovely place you've got here. Oh, the place is all right, but we don't get any customers. What a shame. Do they know the bread's free? No one will come this way in the dark. Well, I can't understand that. You've got some lovely dark round here. No, the castle up the road is the trouble. Yes, it's haunted. You're telling us. It's our castle. What? what? You mean you've leased it? I don't know whether we've leased it or lost it, but it's ours. You haven't seen the ghost, have you? Seen him. He nearly cleft us to the brisket. Right. Were you frightened? Oh, we weren't exactly frightened. No, we were scared stiff. <laughs> oh, I just remembered. And we've left our bag there and my clean comms are in it. <laughs> <laughs> it's no laughing matter. How am I going to cast the clout when May's out? Go on, tell us what happened. Well, we got to the castle and we went to bed and we just put the lights out when suddenly we heard... <laughs> what was that? Sounds like someone at the door. Who? Oh, my goodness. What is it? There's nobody there. Don't, Don't worry. worry. There's, There's a perfectly, perfectly natural, natural explanation for everything. Uh, what can it be? It must be the postman. He always knocks twice. <laughs> Lewis! Oh, Dickie, we forgot all about it. Poor old Lewis. Oh, Lewis, meet everybody. Everybody, this is Lewis. What's this? That? Go ahead, Lewis. That's the ham frill at the ghost wall. This wasn't on any ghost. I tell you, it was. Well, if he was a ghost, he got his frill from Moss Brothers. You're right. Moss Bros. What does that mean? It means that someone's been pulling your leg. Go on, he said he was 500 years old. He wouldn't pull a leg at that age. Ah, oh, it's probably some chap living there rent-free and he scared you away. If I thought that, I wouldn't half go red. If it were me, I'd go back and knock the stuffing out of him. You will? Right, we'll come with you. Hey, 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 wait a minute. What about the roadhouse? Oh, Freddie can look after that. And I'll come to anything to break this monotony. Ah, it is a bit humdrum, isn't it? Proper humdrum. Sure. Yes, it's me. I brought the coffee. Oh, wait here. I don't mind. This plan was obtained tonight by F-24 from the Air Ministry. It's a blueprint of the newest long-range bomber. Take all photographs you want of this now, and let me know when you've finished. What is it? The old man. He's brought coffee. Wait. All right, Carl, they've got that. We are coming over to you now. So far, it is all right. But what of the sabotaging of the ammunition works? That also we have arranged. Carl is working now on the time bomb. It is good. Now listen carefully. Yes, Excellency? We expect you tonight in Breslin for further instructions. Bring nothing incriminating with you. That's all. Nestole. Nestole. Where well, is the old man in now? Wait. Is my bag on the plane? Yeah, everything's fixed. Is that ready? Yes, all it needs now is winding up and the alarm setting. Good, then put it away. All right, Mateo. You can come in. Evening, gentlemen. Hope the coffee's all right. I've kept as up as I can. Pour it out and don't talk so much. You are late. Sorry, sir, but I've had a bit of an accident tonight. Mm, what are you talking about? I've had a couple of visitors. Visitors? Yes. Yeah. All right, don't worry. I handle the situation all right. <laughs> I put on that uniform you gave me and did a bit of haunting. <laughs> that scared them. <laughs> I wasn't half airy. I frightened myself a bit. Mm, any danger of them returning? <laughs> They've gone all right, and they won't come back in a hurry. <laughs> Don't make a noise, and we play old Jasper the Grasper at his own game. What do you mean? Well, he haunted us, didn't he? We'll snoop round till we find him, then we'll haunt him back again. But whatever you do, keep quiet. I thought you said we to keep quiet. So I did, but I hadn't started yet. No, 
Now I'm ready. Come on. Uh, I don't know what all of you said to remember this long past my bedtime. Oh, be quiet. When I let you come here to broadcast your baked beans, you didn't tell me you were going to keep me up all night. Oh, shut up. It's all very well for you to say shut up. Here, how am I going to get home? Last green line's gone. I ain't got my tricycle with me. All right, uh, you can come in the car with us and we'll drop you in town. Here, you'll be careful how you drive, won't you? Know what you young fellas are in this car. Okay. This way, sir. Mind your head. Hey, what about the light? We can switch them off at the bottom. Oh, it's a dentist. Where do we spit? Do you notice something fishy about this place? No, I can't smell anything. This is the first room we've seen with electric light. Huh. They've got a young power station here. Oh, it's a soda fountain. Now, what flavor would you like? Chocolate, raspberry, or vanilla? Raspberry? Right, you shall have it. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. oh, Dickie, I've got sunstroke. You haven't hurt yourself, have you? No, but I can see a lot of lights. So can I, you silly little man. You just switched them on. Why? Look, here's a microphone. And this is a camera. I know what it is. It's a television studio. And there's a screen. Oh, what a bargain, and all for three quid. Arthur, this is the biggest break we've ever had. We don't need the BBC now. What? That's right. We can broadcast without them. We can start in opposition. What a swell idea. We can get the band and the girls and put in a terrific show, and we'll... Oh. What's the matter? Does anybody know how to work this thing? No. Wait a minute, I think Freddie does. He used to work in a radio shop. Grand, then we'll have our own station and call it the ABC. What? The Askitop Broadcasting Corporation. Come on, let's get Freddie. I know, he's getting... Well, we are very pleased with your work, Shaffer. Thank you, Excellency. Oh, look, what a lot of lovely Kotchkits. Gadgets. I said Kotchkits. Well, can you make them work? I think perhaps, yes. Where is the screen? The screen? You're not going to televise us in the rude, are you? Oh, he means the screen we see you on. It's over there. Oh, look, isn't it nice? Now, let's see. This little piggy went to market, yeah. and this little piggy stayed home. Oh, isn't it exciting? Oh, isn't it exciting? Somebody in trap number one. Oh! Oh, that's all right. It's just for the black tooth. No, I ain't. I've never seen any of you before. Here, take your hands off me. Take your hands off me. Who is he? He's the old devil who gave us the willies last night. Do you realize you're trespassing here? Oh, no, I ain't. If you are, I'm caretaker here. I look after this place for the owners. Well, eh? we're the owners now, and I'm not quite sure that we need a caretaker. Staircase. A ghost chaser. Man to look, look after, after the place. place. You're, you're set. set. Oh. What? And another thing. What's all this ghost nonsense? You frighten the life out of us. You wait till we tell the estate agent about you. Oh, dear. Oh, you wouldn't do that? Yes, we would. Well, the haunting wasn't my idea. I didn't mean no harm. You see, some gentlemen have got this place for commercial broadcasting, and they don't want no strangers about, see? Hey, that accounts for the television studio. That's right. They're showing their baked beans to the world. Oh, are they? Well, we've got more than baked beans to show the world. Have these broadcasters rented the place? Well, you know, I let you chew them on the side. Mm. Oh, you did, did you? Mm. That's another thing the estate agents would like to know. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. But we're not going to say anything because from now on you're working for us, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah, of course I am. But you won't tell Mr. Obday, will you? Not if you behave like a good boy. No. Oh, uh, Jack, we've finished. We're, we're having a break now. Where can we get some coffee? Oh, yes, Jack. We are thirsty. Ask Old Faithful. He's a local lad. He'll show you. Yes, come on, girls. Come on, that way. That's it. Turn to the left there. That's right. Go on. I'm going to like working for you. Wait for me. Wait for me. Oh. Huh? Oh, I think I got it working. Will somebody stand in front of the camera? I will. Oh, no, let me. Oh, spoil, spoil. Well, I've never seen me on the screen. Now, how would you like me to stand? This is my best side. Although, this is nearly as bad. Don't make about stand still. Put this mic in front of the camera. Talk or sing or something. One talk, one sing, coming up. Hey, then, y'all. Oh, what a glorious thing to be. A healthy, grown-up, busy, busy bee. The Board of Agriculture has been very busy of late, pinching all the pollen from the colony flowers. I'd like to be a busy, busy bee. Haven't you got me yet, Freddy? Shut up and keep singing. I think I've got it. Being just as busy as the bee can be, flying round the garden, the sweetest ever seen, taking back the honey to the dear old queen. Da hätte man uns erst nicht 15 Jahre vorher ausplündern sollen. 
Ihnen gar nichts nützen, denn Sie können ja kaufen. Sie you like but works they need. I like to be a busy, busy bee, being just as busy as a bee can be, flying all around the wild hedge rows, stinging all the cows upon the parson's nose. Who is that? I don't know, Excellency. I'd like... Oh, Dickie, how much longer have I got to stand in this heat? My combs are all racking up. They're all round my waist. It's walking. Eh? Hey? What? So it is. Look, we're all on that screen. Oh, Dickie, and you didn't tell me. My hair's all untidy. Here, watch me while I make a funny face. Oh, you do look at it. I think it's an improvement. Look. Himmel, Your station is discovered. You must get back at once. Destroy all evidence. Leave nothing. Yes, Excellency. Wait a minute. I think I've got another bite. What? Look. No. This is the BBC television station at Alexander Palace. Good morning, everybody. Morning. Where's she coming from? Carrie's on the palace. That means we're on the same wavelength. This morning, instead of our usual demonstration film, Mr. John Pilkington is going to tell you something about our television plans for the future. Pilkington? Oh, Dickie, it's the old battle axe himself. Here he comes. Ladies and gentlemen, in response to many earnest requests, I'm appearing in person before you this morning. Earnest request? Who'd ask him anyway? Now, many of us are asking, what is the future of television? And I bet you don't know the answer. You see, I'm always like, yes. Well, go on, put me through. I'll tell him a few things. Go on, Jack, look after the lights. To keep get the camera. Okay. As you know, I'm always on the lookout for fresh talent. Don't you believe it. You can't get near the old gentleman. In fact, all of us up here are anxious to find new faces. Ha! And blimey, you could do with it. Did you ever see such a clock in your life? I'd like to give you morning programs, but at the moment that is not possible. Very shortly, we hope to conduct a ballot. Yes, vote for Pilkington for putrid programs. Ooh. Oh, heavens, where's that coming from? It's not from this studio. It must be an outside station. I have, however, some very good news for you all. Don't tell us you're going to resign. This is dreadful. Fade them out. You can't. It's a pilot wavelength. Then fade out, Mr. Pilkington. Now I have a most interesting announcement to make. I, I'm sorry, sir. We, we've had to fade you out. You, you, you've done what? I'm terribly sorry, sir. We, we've got interference. And, uh... Interference, sir? Do I understand that I've been faded out? Now, perhaps if you come with me, sir, you'll understand what's happened. Oh. Well, playmates, I've done you one good turn. I've got rid of him. And now I can tell you what really does happen. He says he spends his time searching around for fresh talent. Shall I tell you what happens when he finds it? He keeps it hanging about for three months and then gives it the sack. Scoundrel, I'll... Fade him off instantly. I, I, I am sorry, sir. I, I can't. It, it's a pirate station. Pirate station? Why the... Him and his experts. Why, I could do better than him with my hands tied behind my back. And what's more, I will. You tune in on this wavelength at 8 o'clock tonight and I'll show you. I'll show you some of the talent that he's missed. Jack Hilton and his band. Pat Kirkwood. Arthur Askey. Richard Murdoch. Huh. I'll have this man in jail. Get the police. Get Scotland Yard. Get everything. I want that station traced. Yes, sir. Yes, it's all jolly well saying it'll be all right on the night, but this is the night, and we're on in half an hour. Well, let's tell a few old jokes and call it Chestnut Corner. Well, what else is here? Here, we might try that waiter joke. Oh, yes, waiter, have you a wild duck? No, but I've got a tame one I could aggravate for you. <laughs> oh, shut up. Well, we have to go. Oh, Dickie, I've just thought of another one. What is it? Would you like to see a photograph of me taken when I was in hospital? Rather. There you are. I'm in the end bed. Yes, but the end bed's empty. Is it? I must have got out for a minute. Now, that's a first one about... Come on, Stinky. At least fingers are here. Oh. Stinker. Right there. There they are. Good evening, girls. Sorry to keep you waiting. Good evening, Mr. Murdoch. Brought your music with you. Yes, Mr. Murdoch. Good. Now, I want to put a straight quartet into the show tonight. What is this? The Blue Barrage? What are you doing here? Well, I'm not doing much at the moment, old boy, but I shall be when we start to sing. Sing? You're not singing in this. Oh, go on, let me sing. Good evening, girls. <laughs> Am I popular? But you don't know this word. Oh, just show me the hard bits. I'll get on all right. All right, there's the copy. So. Now, you see here, you start and dance. And uncle. What do you mean, and uncle? You have auntie, you must have uncle. I didn't say anything about auntie or uncle. I said and dance, meaning slow. Oh, I didn't know. Hmm. And in this bit, you see, you sing bouche ferme. Who? Not who, Bouche Ferme. Never heard of him. Bouche Ferme means mouth shut. Oh, I see what you mean. And do the girls keep their mouth shut too? In that part, yes. That'll take a bit of doing, won't it? That's very rude. Well, if that's quite clear, we'll make a start. Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I better have
have a cut of this uh, Plume de Martin business. Bouche Ferme. A Bouche Ferme. All right, Gondry. <coughs> you have to keep your lips closed. Do you know this quartet from the auditorio, Old King Cole? Oh, this is easy. Easy for you. You've got very little to do in it. Now, are we ready? Here, don't you think we'd better give the girls a bit of a start? What do you mean, give them a start? Well, let them sort of start, and we'll catch them up as we go along. Certainly not. We, we all start together. Here, have either of you two ever said anything by yourselves? No. No? Are we ready? Just then, go, please. Oh, King Cole was a merry old soul, a merry old soul was he. A merry old soul was he, a merry old soul was he. Oh, King Cole was a merry old soul, a merry old soul was he. Oh, come here, there's no dance. No dance. No dance. Oratorio. Oratorio. Oh, King Cole was a merry old soul, and a merry old soul was he. King Cole! Oh, King Cole was a merry old soul, was he. No bagpipes. No bagpipes. No dance. No dance. Oratorio. Oh, King Cole. 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 Oh, King
59 and 3 quarters, 59 and 7 eighths, go! Hello, everybody. This is the Esket Off Broadcasting Company. This morning we promised it, and tonight you're going to get it. A brand new scintillating epoch making show. Ladies and gentlemen, Bandwagon. or my ratting suit. Evening dress or your ratting suit? Mm. Well, you can't go wrong in evening dress. Right, I'll wear my ratting suit. By the way, who are you going to take to the dance? Well, I think I shall take Violet. Violet? Mm. Violet who? Violet Ray. Violet Ray. Oh, I know her brother. Hip hip. Oh, Ray. Oh. Who are you going to take? I'm going to take Norse, yeah. Yes, but she can't dance, can she? No, she can't dance, but all can that baby sit out. <laughs> oh, ba 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 One port and lemon and she's mine. <laughs> You know, Big, honestly, you don't look the sort of little man who takes girls out to dances. <laughs> what was I laughing at? Do you remember? I don't know. I can't think. I'll go and ask my mother. Mother! And now that we've got rid of him, Pat Kirkwood and I will give you our version of the only one who's difficult is you. OK, Jack. <laughs> Honey, you're so lovely. But I seem so hard to get. Honey, you've refused me. Since the very day we met. Honey, have some pity. For you know I love you so. Tell me one thing, just the one thing, that I'm wanting to know. You'd fix things right away. Uh -huh. If you could have your way The only one who's difficult is you The preacher's quite okay The organist would play The only one who's difficult is you The weather report for Sunday says Suitable day for you to say you'll be mine. Oh, the choir is ready to sing, and the bells are willing to ring. The only one who's difficult is you. You'd fix things right away if you could have your way. The only one who's difficult is you. The preacher's quite okay And I'll be there to play The only one who's difficult is you <laughs> The weather report for Sunday says bright sunshine A suitable day for you to say You'll be mine The choir will Whose difficult is you?
Sounds like him. Yes, we'll soon know what it's all about. He's in a hurry, all right. We got your message. What has happened? Our station has been found. We must be quick. Back to Drune Castle and hurry. And now, customers, we can't avoid it any longer. Here is Big Hearted Arthur in person. <laughs> Little man, what are you going to sing? Well, I don't know, Governor. What would you like me to sing? Something short? Yeah, go on, hop it. Don't be so rude. I'll announce it myself. Well, playmates, I'm going to sing you one of my balmy little songs now, and as this is a bit on the bright side, I think you better get Grandma to bed. Go on, Grandma, hop it. Have an early night. There she goes. Dear old Grandma. <laughs> Gertie, old faggot. So here it is, playmates. A pretty little bird am I. I like you My heart is like a singing bird, what wings its way from pole to pole. My heart is like a singing bird, my liver's like a dry pencil, ha ha, hee hee. Oh, little brown jump don't I love thee, I sing, 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 I fly, fly, fly. A pretty little bird am I, yi, yi, a pretty little bird am I. My father's like a singing bird, a corn gray or a raven black. He's always singing at his work, and sixteen times he's had the sack. Ha ha, he he. Oh, little brown ale, don't he love thee? I sing, sing, sing. Ah, ah, I fly, fly, fly. Hello, Louis here. Come and see your uncle Arthur. Get up and squeeze. Am I? My heart is like a singing bird, although I'm poor and badly fed. And when my voice is worn away, I'll beg my door from bread to bread. Ha ha, he he. Oh, little brown workhouse, I love thee. I sing, sing, sing. I fly, fly, fly. A pretty little bird. Am I, I, I? I'm going to fly away. Bye, bye. Yeah. 
At last, somebody's thought of an original end. Oh, I have an urgent communication, sir, from Sir Angus MacBee. Chief? Yes, sir. Congratulations on magnificent publicity campaign. Bandwagon must be regular feature. Signed, Angus MacBee. Which is in. Great. That's another one of his shirts. Help! Help! Quickly! Before we are blown to bits. There's a goat here with a time bomb on him. Look! There he is down by the camera. Oh, 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 oh. Stop, stop, everybody, stop! It's our joke. Yes, we know how to handle him. Quiet, everybody. Come on, Lewis. Come on, Come Dada. On. There's a good boy. Come on, Rosebud. Don't be frightened. Come on, Lewis. There you are. There you go, Lewis. Oh, 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 And that, Playmates, is how Bandwagon came to the BBC. And I go. 